What's going on, everybody? Estas here. So the stock market is absolutely crushing it today, guys. S&P 500 up 60 points, up 1.8%. The Dow Jones up 480 points, also up 1.8%. And the NASDAQ is up over 200 points, and it's also up just a little bit over 1.8% on the day so far with about 45 minutes left in the session. And in this video, we're going to be talking more about the stock market, breaking down some technicals, going over the top stocks that I'm actually looking to buy as we're slowly creeping into October here in 2020. And I also want to talk to you guys about what stocks I'm involved with, what moves am I currently making, and in general, where my head is at right now as a trader, as an investor in this current very rocky, volatile stock market that we're in. So if you guys find value, hit that like button for me, subscribe to the channel and make sure to hit that notification bell and also check out all the free links down below if you guys want to join the discord chat facebook group and if you guys want one free stock from webull all of those are linked right down below in the description box so let's get into it guys again we have about 42 minutes left in the session today so we're going to get some live action in this video and let's start off like we always do if it wants to work here i don't know why it's not working the S&P 500. Here we go. Let's pull it up like this. So the S&P 500, like we said, up 1.75% today, doing very well. And if you guys remember, yesterday we talked about how, and also on Friday, we talked about how the markets were potentially in a bull trap, meaning since we didn't break out of this high on the S&P from last week on the 22nd of September at about 33.20, that could potentially be uh, a lower high in this downtrend, meaning that it could be a bull trap. But now we broke out of 33.20, which was that high from last week, which is very good for the bulls. We also broke out of, if we zoom in a bit here, onto the five day, five minute, we broke above some key moving averages and, and you can see it here on a closer time frame, 33.22. And we also broke... 3330, which was another big level of resistance here on the S&P, which was a support stemming back from the 8th of September all the way up to the 18th. So kudos to the bulls. They broke two or three major levels of resistance, but there's another big one coming up, which is arguably <clears throat> the most important one. This, I'd argue, it is the most important one. Right around here at 33.80. And you could argue 34.20 as well. 34.25, right? If I extend this to the right, you can see that the market struggled here back in the 8th of September to the 18th. They struggled right around 34.20 and at 33.30. So at this point, watch out. And also, this 180 simple moving average here on the hourly chart, this could also be a big resistance. So moving forward, even for these next 40 minutes, and you guys can see it live action, I mean, we are seeing a bit of resistance under here as of right now. Watch and see what the S&P does here. Do we end up getting rejected at 33.80 and maybe go back down to test 33.30? If that happens, and especially if 33.30 breaks on the downside and 33.20, that could indicate more selling. That could also be a bull trap, guys. This could also be a bull trap where we are right now, believe it or not, since the 180 SMA has been such a big resistance here on the hourly chart. So until we're out of that 180 SMA, until we're out of 3380, and we're starting to push back up to 3430, I'm still not convinced that we're out of this downtrend. That's just me being quite honest. I'm still not convinced that we're out of this downtrend until we break 3380 and honestly, 3428 to 30 as well. If this ends up breaking, that is when I'll be fully convinced, technically speaking here, right, that we might be going back to, uh, we will be going back to all time highs. That is where I think the probability goes up a lot higher the second we break 34. 30. And you guys can see it for yourselves. Again, as of now on the hourly chart, we're starting to see a red candle form. We're starting to see some resistance under this big level that we just talked about. On the five day, five minute, you guys can see we're also, yeah, we're argu uh, arguably holding the uptrend 
on the day, but the past two, three hours have really been stagnant so far, and we'll see what happens. If we take a big dive heading into the close of the market, that's not going to be too good for the bulls, quite honestly, if we close on a downswing. But on the flip side, if we close on an upswing, it's going to be the opposite. That's going to be a very good sign for the Bulls, and tomorrow is really going to determine, um, because we only have 35 minutes left in today's session, so tomorrow is really going to determine more in terms of direction, right? And we'll see what direction we end up picking. And make sure to subscribe to the channel, because every day, Monday through Friday, I'm uploading videos like this, breaking down the markets for free. This is on YouTube, so this is free of charge all you got to do is subscribe and hit that like button while you're at it. So s and is looking good as of right now. Let's pull up some other indexes. Dow Jones, if we pull up this chart, a lot of the same, right? We're coasting all day today. But the past two, three hours, we've been a bit stagnant. We hit 27,700 and we've seen a big resistance all day pretty much. Well, actually not all day, uh, just the past two, three hours at that point. You guys can see it here on the intraday chart. And if we pull out a bit onto the four hour chart, we're in a similar spot as the S&P. Yeah, we're, we're out of some smaller time frame resistances. If we take a look here on the five day, five minute and so forth, that's looking good as we're trading above both moving averages here on the five day, five minute. But if we peel back the layers on the onion a bit here and uh, go to that four hour chart that we just were on, that we were just on, we're still under the 50 SMA here. Um, you know, we're still at a lower high technically, and we are seeing some selling at this key level of resistance, which does worry me a bit and indicates to me that this could still be a bull trap. This could still be a bull trap. And let's say we break out of 27,700. I think in the short term, yes, we could gap up to 28,200. If that breaks, if 28,200 breaks, that is where I think the Dow Jones could take off and maybe test those highs that we saw back in the beginning of September. But until that happens, guys, I'm not convinced until 27,700 breaks and until 28,200 breaks as well. So the markets, guys, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. The markets could turn on a dime on you and uh, just just follow the technicals, guys. I know a lot of people out there, they, they say, oh, technicals aren't good. You know, fundamentals are only, you know, the only thing you should use. But if you guys follow my videos, you should know at this point, technicals work, right? We, we cover the technicals here on the channel. And yeah, I'm not Nostradamus. I don't always say what's going to happen next. That's impossible, right? But we do see the levels I talk about here on individual stocks and on indexes. We see those levels tested. We see stocks pan out according to the technicals all the time, right? And you guys can attest to that down below in the comments. I mean, you know this too. It's not because of me. You know, you know this on your own. If you're a trader, if you analyze the markets every day, you know that this stuff works, right? You know this stuff works. So let's go over to the NASDAQ here, which at this point, still up about 200, still up about 1.8%, same, uh, same amount that it was up when we started this video. And if we zoom in a bit, let's say on the hourly chart, you guys can see we broke out of a little downtrend that was really stemming from the 9th of this month all the way to about the 28th of this month. We gapped up out of that, which is a pretty good bullish sign in the short term, but we're still under big levels of resistance. We're still under 11,500. We're still under that 180 SMA as well, which worries me a bit. That quite honestly worries me a bit as this could be a bull trap, like I've been saying with the previous indexes. If this fails to break, if we don't break out of the mid-11,000s, which if we do do that, I think that's going to be extraordinary for the bulls. But if we don't, if we get rejected at 11,500 like we did earlier in September, we start to push down back towards 11,000 flat, even under 11,000, that is where the bears are going to take control, guys. That's just my opinion. And of course, let me know your opinion down below in the comments. What are your thoughts on the markets? What are you guys doing? Where do you guys see things headed? How much cash are you in? Are you mostly in the market? 
mostly out of the market? Let me know down below. Now, let's talk about what I personally did today. And the funny thing is, guys, I didn't do anything today. Uh, I didn't do anything. I'm just riding my positions that I've been in here for a couple of days. I got in EA Electronic Arts on Friday. This one I'm still holding, and uh, <clears throat> it's not doing that great today. It's up only 0.8%. Earlier, it hit about $134, which is a big resistance. Got hit from there, uh, but ultimately, it's recovering from that hit heading into the close. You guys can see it here on the intraday chart. It's doing very very well heading into the close. It's it's uh, bouncing back, which I'm loving. I'm loving that price action. And for me, I'm in at $131.20. And this is a swing trade. This is a swing trade for me. I'm not looking to get in and out of it. I'm just looking to hold on to it. Ultimately, I think these next couple of months, Video games and video game stock, well, video game stocks, companies that produce video games are going to do very well. And I want to be in for the wave guys, right? We have the new systems coming out. I talk about this all the time. This is going to be great for companies like EA, Activision, TTWO, and so forth. So I think we have a price target. I have a price target, 140, 145 on this particular stock. And Workhorse, guys, Workhorse was amazing. DPHC as well which Diamond Peak Holdings is what that's called, bringing Lordstown Motors public. They absolutely exploded today. And let me tell you, I got excited when I saw what's going on there. We saw President Trump. Guys, this is, this is funny. Um, let me pull up the picture. We saw Trump here at, I think this was at the White House, right? Yeah, at the White House. This is a tweet from uh, Mark Noller. I don't even know who this guy is. I just saw his tweet, screenshotted it. He said, at the White House, President Trump gets close-up look at the new Lordstown Motors electric-powered pickup truck. This is manufactured by a plant in Lordstown, Ohio, formerly owned by GM. Guys, you know the story. Um, GM left the city, 1,500 people roughly lost their job, and now, boom, Lordstown's going in there making this endurance. I believe they were talking 100,000 of these trucks per year is what they're looking to do. And this shot the stock up like crazy. We arguably saw a short squeeze as well because of this. Uh, you know, people were covering their shorts, the stock, the stock just went bananas. And this is good. I think this is good, especially uh, just publicity for this particular truck, just getting the name out there, the endurance, right? This is a, this is a stock, not a stock. Well, yeah, I guess you could argue it is um, a stock, but Workhorse has 10% in this business, right? Which is why Workhorse is running. Same with DPHC, because they own 10% of Lordstown Motors, which is incredible. So I'm in workhorse here. I've been in for, for a while at this point. I got in at $23, and I ended up trimming in profits. I believe that was uh, a week or two ago, but I added more money at $25 last week, and I've just been riding the position since. And at this point, I'm still in the position. I did not sell. I think there's more upside here. I'm loving what I saw just from that 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 whole uh, Trump thing. It's just it's it's hilarious. Um, not that it's hilarious, but it's uh it's great. It's great publicity for the company. I'm loving that. And we know the future is bright. It's bright over there in Ohio, I believe at least, with everything going on in Lordstown, with Lordstown, and you know the future with all the different cars, trucks that they're looking to bring to the market. And if you guys didn't know, that actually used to be a Chevy cruise plant. I didn't even know that, but it was a Chevy cruise plant and 1,500 people lost their job when GM left. That's the thing with those cities that are heavily reliant on those massive manufacturers of cars. They could get destroyed if those car companies leave. So I'm really happy to see Lordstown do what they're doing in Ohio. That's fantastic. So I'm still holding on to Workhorse again. I don't really plan on selling it at this point. I think we can be over $30 in the next couple of weeks. I don't know when it's going to happen. Again, guys, I'm not Nostradamus, but I think we're going much higher than lower at this point in time. And I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But that is just what I'm thinking. And I love to know what you guys have to think down below on any of that. And I'm also still an Apple 
AAPL. Apple's doing very well today, up over 2%, up $2.33. We're trading right around my cost basis now. Finally, guys, I've recouped some losses there. I'm still down a little bit. I think I'm in at about 116 17 on this stock, but we're trading at about 114.50. I could not be happier. And honestly, I'd be even happier if the stock were to go lower. Let's say if we do go back down to $100, I'd buy a lot more of this stock. So at this point, I'm holding holding on to it and I'm just not looking to really sell until we hit my price target which is around 130 135 dollars on this particular stock. So that's all I'm doing here, guys. I mean, we're going to talk about a bunch of other ones here um, just in, in, in a couple seconds, but that's what I'm doing right now. Nothing much. I'm mostly cash in my uh, uh, trading account here, and I'm just holding on to three stocks right now as a swing trade. So what did you guys do? Let me know in the comments. I would love to know. Now, let's talk about some Virgin Galactic, man. Did you guys see what happened today with that one? And it's still going. I mean, and sheesh, it's up to the mid 20s at this point, up 25% on the day. And what did I say, guys? This is a stock, and I've said this the whole consolidation period pretty much. This is a stock that's very news sensitive. The second we get some positive catalyst, whether it's something to do with their with their spacecrafts, Branson, this, that, the third, financing, a buy rating. The second we get something like that on stocks like this, they go bananas. They go bananas. We've talked about this, right? And what do you know? Today, the shares popped as Bank of America and Susquehanna initiated coverage of the space flight company with a buy rating and positive ratings. Uh, actually, no, a buy rating from Bank of America and positive ratings from Susquehanna, whatever that means. But overall, that's very good. That's very good. They're, they're putting positive and buy ratings here. And Susquehanna said it sees Virgin Galactic as an innovator of space technology with a truly unique offering that will allow civilians and professionals alike to access space for entertainment and research purposes. Bank of America highlighted the company's nearly full vertical integration capabilities in the assembly of the spacecraft. So we got the catalyst, this thing exploded, and me personally, guys, I'm not in it as a trade right now, but I've been mentioning this in the videos, but... I've been buying in my long-term accounts, some retirement accounts as well. I've been accumulating shares from $16, $15, $17, even before this. I mean, I've been buying this stock for months at this point. Um, I didn't sell any on the rip here because it's a long-term position. And I think it's going to go a lot higher than this eventually. But at this point, I'm holding on to it. I'm very happy about it. And I think as Wall Street catches on, and once we see it actually come into fruition, people going to space, it's safe, it's a nice experience. I think once Wall Street catches on to that, this stock could go on fire. And again, I'm not Nostradamus, I don't know where it's going to go, but if you told me, let's say I had a crystal ball, and you told me this is going to be a $100 stock in 5 to 10 years, and I, I saw the future somehow... I wouldn't I really would not be surprised, right? I think this stock could even go higher than 100 at some point, but there's a lot of a lot of risk here and they have to execute. And at this point Branson is looking to fly Q1 or Q2 of 2021 and and if that goes successfully, man, this is going to this stock's going to explode on that catalyst as well. I can almost guarantee that if everything goes smooth, guys. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens there. But overall, Virgin Galactic, at this point, you could argue it's overbought. In the short term, our size, over 80. It's over 70, which is unbelievable. And we see that there's a, a big resistance coming up, right around $21. Big support at around $19 right here on the downside. So if we ended up moving here, uh, uh, range bound, consolidating for a couple weeks, even a week or two at 19 to $21, right around there. I wouldn't be surprised, right, before maybe ripping above 21. And if 21 breaks, I think there's a lot of upside to the mid 20s from there, from $21 to 25. But again, mind you, we are overbought. Be careful. We could sell off from here, we could move range bound a little bit anything could happen. So that is Virgin Galactic. 
The next one here is Snapchat, which also got a buy rating today. A lot of these stocks got buy ratings today, guys. Um, an analyst at Guggenheim upgraded Snap to a buy from neutral. Snap up 4% on the news, up about a dollar here. We, we're gapping up above $24.80 to about $25, which is a big level of support. Now we're looking to test 26. I'm not looking to get into it, quite honestly, until we break 26, which is a big resistance stemming back from the beginning of July. But the second we break 26, 27, that is where I think a lot of a lot of potential could come into Snapchat, right? If we're pulling up this three-year chart, I don't even remember the highs of Snapchat. Yeah, we're already at the highs. So if we break 26, 27, I mean, we could be going straight to all-time highs. Obviously, we will be going to all-time highs, but we could see a massive move. Let's say, actually, no, all-time highs are back at 2940. So scratch that. But if we break 26, 27, hey, we could maybe go up to test 29.50, maybe $30. So watch out here for Snapchat. Another one that got a buy rating today, I believe, is Pinterest. P-I-N-S. Guggenheim initiated the social media company with a buy rating and a $48 price target. So let me uh let me show you guys. Pinterest right now is up about a buck, up 2.7%, and if we take a look at it here on the 4-hour chart, very similar to Snapchat. It's it's approaching a big resistance mid 42s. If we break that, that is where we could see a, another leg up in this stock. And I'm not too sure. I don't cover this stock. Uh, I'm not too sure what the all-time high uh, high is. I do know it recently IPO'd about uh, two years ago. So we might be at all-time highs. Yeah, we are uh, at all-time highs now. But $48 buy target, price target, that's pretty interesting. And Pinterest, hey, we might get that move if this 42 level ends up breaking. And DKNG and CZR, guys, these two stocks here, well, DKNG is doing a lot better. It's up 7%, but CZR, Caesars Entertainment, just ended up, I don't know if it's official yet, they're in talks of buying William Hill in a deal that would value the British bookmaker at $3.7 billion. So sports betting is a real big market here, guys. You know, DKNG, ever since the NFL started, this thing is going bananas. Um, it's gone from mid-30s to now almost $60 per share. I missed the move, I'll be honest, but if any of you guys caught it, hey, that's good enough for me, right? If you guys made money with it, I'm happy about it. Uh, but me, I missed the move. But hey, there could still be potential moving forward for anybody that missed the move including myself. You know, this could be a 60 plus dollar stock. Who knows? And CZR, I didn't even realize this, guys. I saw this earlier and I almost lost my mind. CZR went from $6 to now almost $60 since this this crisis hit. So this stock's 10x. Unbelievable. I didn't even know that until I saw it. Um, this has got to be the best uh, performing, you know, uh, I don't even know what to call it, entertainment stock, whatever, out of the bunch, but we'll see. Either or, um, either way, DKNG and CZR could do well in the short term. CZR is not really moving that much. It's up about 2.5%, but if this deal becomes official, if it mo uh, moves through, then we could see a massive shoot in this stock. And I'm also still interested in Amazon, guys. Amazon's one that I got out of on Friday. I missed uh, I missed some gains on this, but it's okay. Workhorse made up for that, guys. Don't worry. But I, I sold a bit early. I missed some gains on Amazon, but we saw a price target of about 34, 3500, a buy rating initiated. We also have the holiday season coming up, which I know we're in crisis times, guys, but We'll see how they do. I think people are still going to buy from Amazon and the sales should increase over the holiday season. So I'm thinking over these next couple of months, I mean, Amazon could do well. We could end up going back up to the mid 3000s. So just because I sold out, took a profit on Friday on my trade doesn't mean that I'm not looking to get back in, right? And if let's say we break 3200, that's probably where I'm looking to get back in. As you guys can see, I mean, 3200 and 3250, these have been big levels of resistance stemming back from, uh, that's actually the beginning towards the middle of July. So if that's able to break, I mean, I think Amazon could go up to 3,500 
in the next couple of months, depending on what happens in the market, of course. There's a lot of what ifs. Let's say the market crashes. Amazon's probably not going to go to 3500 since it's, it's, it's a large cap. But let's say the markets slowly push up. I, I see Amazon going right along with the markets. And Tesla, Tesla's looking interesting here, guys. Last I checked, it was about $420. Yep, $422 right now. Let's pull it up. And we can see Tesla is in an interesting little wedge right here. You guys can see it, right? Pretty big support at $340. We held that back in the beginning of September, held about 360 a couple days ago and now we're just just getting ourselves into this wedge you guys can see it here on the four hour chart to the point where if we break 425 430 this thing could go bananas especially if volume starts to kick in i'm thinking this is a potential possibility for this week right if this wedge breaks on the upside and especially if 450 to about 400 and sixty dollars breaks and my computer's i don't know why it's going really slow right now but you guys get the point i'm trying to draw these trend lines here you guys get the point if we break this wedge break 460 i think tesla in the short term could go bananas there's a lot of potential there right and if we open up the next one, and let's say, and, and let's say for example, 420 does not break. We could be going straight back to 380. That's also an, uh, a possibility. So the next one here, last couple. I'm looking at Walmart, WMT. We're at 137 right now, holding the uptrend. We're actually breaking out of the wedge here on the four hour, which is very good news for me. But we're not breaking out of the resistance from last week, which is around 138, 139 dollars, 140 dollars. So until until that breaks on Walmart, I'm not budging. I'm being patient. I'd rather be in cash than force that trade. But if 140 does take off, um, we break and do something like this. If my uh, little trend line tool wanted to work, but you know, if we broke one third, uh, 140 into the mid 140s, that is where I'm looking to get in on uh, Walmart here. And Fastly is another one, FSLY, which I'm interested in. I'm watching this one despite it being a red day. I think as long long as Fastly, uh, a red day for Fastly, that is, you know, I think as long as Fastly is able to hold 88 to 90 bucks, I think there could be opportunity there. Maybe back up to, let's say, the high 90s, $100. I think we're range bound right now, meaning we're trading between two distinct levels from 90 to 100. Um, I think there could be a move there. So watch out for Fastly. And the last one here, guys, is going to be Johnson & Johnson, ticker symbol J&J, which they do actually report report earnings here in the next couple of weeks. So actually the next two weeks at this point on the 13th of October. So a very nice support was built at 145. Now we're about to test 147, 148 guys. That's a big resistance. I think if that breaks along with this 180 SMA on the four hour chart, I think J&J &J in the short term has a lot of potential back up to the mid 150s, 150 uh, to let's say 155. So watch out for that move here on J and J, and who knows with these earnings, it very uh, it, it very well could end up going to that point. Uh, at about $155. So that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. And we have about 15 minutes left in the market. And it seems like we're still right around where we started the video. Dow up 450, NASDAQ up 210, S&P up 56. So just be careful, guys. This could very well be a bull trap. Just because we rallied today doesn't mean that we're out of the woods yet. I'd love to know, again, your thoughts down below in the comments. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit that that like button for me subscribe to the channel and make sure to check out all the free links down below if you guys want to join the strive smart discord chat strive smart facebook group and if you want one free stock from webull valued up to sixteen hundred dollars that is also linked right down below all you have to do is deposit a hundred dollars and that is how you get a free stock and i also get a free stock since it is an affiliate link so i'll catch you all in the next video thanks for watching as always you guys are awesome i appreciate you guys